We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags Available on Amazon right now Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. Um, I do want to remind you, you can find Easy Street on Good Talk Radio and Spreaker and several other platforms. So uh, I think we play uh, Easy Street twice every day uh, during the weekdays on Good Good Talk Radio. So hey, welcome to the show. Uh, today, oh, I'm talking about, I don't know, just kind of getting ready for things. One of the things I wanted to bring up is I've been watching a show called Johnny Bravo. Um, he talks about finances and uh, uh, he has an interesting way of doing it. One of the things he's been suggesting because our money's based on on borrowing all that stuff and it's losing value that he will refuse to call a dollar bill money. What he really calls money is gold and silver. So uh, one of the things I want to show you is um, every once in a while, um, I continue to buy a little bit of silver. I don't buy gold because I'm not that rich a guy. But I also know that like a, um, an ounce of silver, this is two ounces here total, um, is worth around close to $30 now, 28 to $30. And uh, <laughs> so if you're going to barter or trade with that in the future, um, I don't think I want to use a whole, a whole ounce. So I got also bought some quarter ounces. And so I bought a bunch of these too, about eight of them. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, I like to have a couple hundred dollars worth of silver. <clears throat> I have more. I also have a five ounce bar and some other coins. And uh, just in case, um, one is, if anything, they're a great gift to give to your grandkids or pass on. Two is they'll always uh, be valuable. And uh, hey, you just can't beat having silver or gold. And so that's the description he uses for that's real money. And, uh, and I have to agree with him is, uh, you know, our money is based on a, a credit system and, uh, and debt system. And so, uh, you know, when things get really bad, uh, <laughs> we won't be able to get very far with paper money. And if things really, really, really got bad and we actually had to start trading things, people would probably still recognize silver and gold along with, you know, things that we uh, uh, stock up on, like uh, food and bullets and different little things, um, uh, talents, skills, things like that are always going to be valuable. Which brings me to the next thing I really want to talk about is the new generation <laughs> and the parents, not, not so much the young generation. So our young generation's been brought up. Uh, one is they just don't have an idea where certain things come from and how it happened. But uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is their skills. We've had this obsession in the last few years that our kids have got to go to college. And I beg to differ. I, I kind of believe uh, um, uh, Mike from Dirty Jobs. He's, he's one guy I really support. Um, if you want to give your kids the greatest gift in the world forever, teach them a skill. Um, and I'll tell you a little story of my father. I was in college and uh, I kept changing my mind. And my dad was like, you either get focused or we're going to do something else. Well, he happened to be somebody at Boeing and he actually helped me uh, uh, when I was like 21, go through a special school that Boeing had for electricians. And it was free and it didn't mean it was a job. They'd say, if you go through a month of this training, if you score decently and stuff, we might hire you. <laughs> so I went and my father got me into it. And uh, sure and heck, and about three months later, I actually got offered a job as an electrician at Boeing. And uh, I was young and I, I kind of was a th thrilled to death. And so I actually started taking Boeing night school for electronics and fiber optics and continued building onto that. And I, I can say through all my whole lifetime, I've always been able to fall back on aerospace work. 
and uh, uh, I've left aerospace, came back, left aerospace, came back, did a lot of my own business and stuff. But having that foundation of a skill, oh my gosh, what a great gift my father gave me. And that's a great gift you can give to your own kids is instead of sending them to college, wasting all that money, then how many are coming out of college and still can't find a darn job? Hey, you make your kid a welder, you make them a plumber, electrician, or specialize in NC programming and things like that for uh, tooling. Uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> they will have a job. Not only will they have a job forever, anywhere they go, any country they go to, those skills are useful. And they will always, they could go to Mexico and they could have a job in electronics or plumbing or welding, et cetera. And they get paid well and they'll always have employment. And um, you just can't go wrong. What a great gift. And that's very affordable too. It's uh, We're not talking about big bucks compared to college. And, and kids are going to college, uh, they're getting so full, filled up with uh, left ideas that they're coming out of school and some parents don't even recognize their kids when they come out. Um, you know, the next best thing is obviously getting uh, learning skills in the military. Um, you know, it was good, good and bad with that. My One of my kids went to uh, the Air Force, came back with a GI Bill, and then went and got his degree and he was in, um, in thrilled uh, his passion was filming and uh, got his degree and uh, GI Bill paid for most of it. What a great thing the, the kid did there. So anyway, guys, if you got kids or teenagers coming up, rethink the four year degree thing. Really rethink it. Think hard because I don't care blue collar, white collar. Um, if you give a kid a skill, they'll always have that foundation. Now they could change later. It might be an electrician at one time and become an NC programmer later. That's okay. That's what once you've got them in the door under a career and they get it, and they get how the world works. Uh, you never know where your kid's going to go from there. And what a great thing you did. And you're not fifty thousand dollars in debt. One of the next things I wanted to talk to people about was. There's a new obsession with getting out of the cities. And trust me, I, I know why. <laughs> and people are realizing one is rules and regulations, politics, law and order, crime, all those things are just boiling in some of these cities. And they're realizing they want to get either out to the outskirts of cities or even going farther and thinking about country living. Um, now that with the COVID thing and, and folks uh, having the chance to work virtual, they're going, I don't have to stand for this anymore. And they and they think moving out to the country or some of them are going off grid and even farther. And uh, hey, that's, I, I totally understand it. I did it myself. Uh, I am now living out in the country. I uh, love it out here. Um, there's a lot of drawbacks though you gotta think about. First of all, do not bring your city ideas to the country you got to ask yourself, why are you leaving in the first place? So, hey, you know, HOAs and telling your neighbor how to live. You got to realize when you live out in the country, it's for the freedom of living, which means that some folks out there might have a few cars or trailers in their yard, which, you know, most people have more property than normal. Um, you need to be tolerant and uh, understanding uh, the diversity of people. No big deal, but being tolerant of each other is important out in the country. Um, understand that someone's coming out to, to the country, they're trying to get away from the laws and regulations and being told what to do all the time. And they may get some chickens or have some uh, horses or have some uh, pigs or something and they make noise and uh, you need to deal with it. You need to tolerate these people. And so don't come out to the country, you city folks, with the ideas that people need to change to where you're the way you're thinking, not going to happen. Um, and you're just going to destroy it. Some of the uh, great little cities up in Montana and Idaho are getting destroyed because the uh, Californians and stuff are coming up there and then they're imposing their will on things that were in California, which are running away from in the first place. Um, and I uh, actually uh, heard Boise is like, 
kind of crazy to live in now. So, uh, people are just bailing from that place because the outsiders moved up there. So anyway, guys, leave your old ideas at home. Start anew, fresh ideas. Be tolerant. That's the most important thing I wanted to pass on. And uh, um, you can have a really nice life. And it's a great place to learn new ways of living. Trying to be more self-sufficient. Uh, get a little bit of property. Learn to grow things. And uh, some of these worries we have going on. Hey, you can uh, kind of relieve it a little bit by using a... Um, learning new skills, learning how to preserve food, grow food, have some animals, learn how to butcher your own animals and, and raise your own meat. Um, if you've never done it before, hey, there's no better time than the present. <laughs> so go for it, guys. So I thought I'd bring that up to you. I, I thought that was an important thing. Uh, I want to remind you, Easy Street's only a half hour show, so we have to kind of plug through the uh, the stuff here um, fast there. The other thing I want to mention is last week's video was with Mike Myers. Very enjoyable. Uh, every time we get on the air together, it's just insane, but super neat guy. So last um, episode 61, I think it was, um, please check out uh, Mike Myers on the last show. So uh, yeah, let's move on. Well, guys, uh, moving on to politics, <laughs> fun stuff. And I'm just winging this one. And uh See, what have I noticed in the politics in the last couple of days there? One is Nancy Pelosi is trying to pull off the 25th Amendment so they can find out if there's something uh, mentally ill with a president or something that way, and they can oust the person. Now, the interesting thing people think is against Trump, but I'm beginning to think that they're actually more interested in that because they may want to oust Biden if he gets elected so they can put Kamala Harris in. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. Anyway... I have to urge you guys, I know I'm conservative, I know, and you probably hate Trump, I know, and but that's not the point. First of all, don't vote on personalities. Vote on accomplishments. Now, you know there's a lot of games going on, and it's happening on both sides, but you got to ask yourself, do you really want socialism? Do you really want them to spend all this money on us and these programs, which... The only thing that could result in is high inflation, which means, you know, five dollars for a cup of coffee is going to soon be ten dollars for a cup of coffee, and things like that. And so you say, "Oh, great! It's, I'm getting all these free things. And I'm starting to get free health care and all that stuff." Well, the cause and effect, um, what looks good at the beginning, is not going to be good later. Um, give Trump a chance to. Uh, and I don't know why this keeps coming out, but if you already have um, uh, an ailment that you're worried about, there's another word for it, um, then uh, the, the Republicans have made it clear they're going to cover that. They, you're included. So get off that. Uh, they keep bringing that up, but it's, it's, um, it's not true. It's uh, let them have a chance to redesign the health care because the old Obamacare or Affordable Cares Act, they called it, is not affordable at all. It's it's a super expensive, and the deductibles are outrageous. Uh, just just to get a price that's reasonable once per month, um, you're looking at six to ten to fifteen thousand dollars out of pocket before even the South, uh, your uh, insurance will do anything. Let them have a chance to redesign that. They did get rid of the, at least the uh, requirement that you had to have insurance and you're forced to buy that or you'd be um, penalized in your taxes. That's gone. But give them a chance to redesign it. Give them a chance to uh, find a way to get our prescriptions lower. Let them redesign the healthcare systems because they weren't this bad before all that. And so something went amok and let them redesign it. Um, and uh, all this attacking going on for four years these guys have tried so hard because they just don't like Trump but that's not what you need to look at is uh, we need we don't want the same old stuff so we bring the other dude in uh, Bright Biden you're looking at one is he's going to be a puppet two is they're all into inside trading and dealing with people in the background and 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 
you know, the hunter thing and all that is because, you know, favors being done under the table and stuff. That kind of uh, uh, politics, we just don't need that stuff anymore. The reason you don't like Trump is he's truthful. The reason you don't like tr uh, Trump is because he's arrogant. And trust me, when you're going to be in that job, you got to like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> because nobody else will. He really believes in Americans. He really stands up for people. Um, he really cares. And uh, yes, you may not like him personally, but throw that aside and clear your head. Take that hate away and ask yourself, what's he... What's, can you actually claim things that he's done in the last three to four years? And the answer is yes. And, and if you talk to the other candidates, what what did he do in 47 years? What did that person do? He was a professional politician. And the reason you don't like Trump is because he doesn't fit that old uh, stereotype of what politicians and presidents should look like. Give him a, a four more years let him work on some of the stuff we need. And, and then after that, then take another look and say, okay, this is enough for me. But uh, if it's not, don't base your vo vote on personalities. Um, I've, uh, I've voted the other side of the fence before in the past, and I did it because I liked the policies of that person at the time. And uh, so I will switch back over if I like the policies of the next ones. But right now, the left has got a this green new green deal and all this stuff is not in our best interest. Um, not short term and certainly not long term. We have to have jobs with fossil fuels and fracking and all that stuff. Uh, there's people that are counting on those jobs, and we also use coal. Clean coal is important, but it, those people, if you wipe out those jobs, you're wiping out communities, you're wiping out families, you're wiping out states, uh, big industries and stuff. What we need to focus on is quit letting other countries taking advantage of us and start bringing things back in, and that's what Trump is doing. So let him do it. Give him the time. And... Uh, the only reason he does, didn't accomplish anything with uh, health care is because it all got blocked um, the one time. And so he had so many things on his agenda, he just moved on. But I know he wants to address our health care and he's going to want to uh, address the infrastructure. And it's going to happen, but just because he wants to doesn't mean Congress and the Senate will let him. He's got to get through all that bureaucracy. So... Uh, to blame him for those things not being done yet is not his fault. It's not like he hasn't tried, but he's been so successful in so many other things. These treaties and, and people taking money from our country and people not paying their fair share, he's been fixing that. And so give him a chance to do some more. I'm begging you, forget about the personality and just demand that he works for us and and gets things done and the guy's a hustler man i mean he just hustles and uh um he's working for us and that's all he cares about and he's not involved in trying to get reelected uh for on and on and on he's not interested in and uh being a lifetime politician he's not uh, interested in making money on the side he already has the money and, and, and how many presidents do you know that donate their paycheck to other organizations? I don't think any of them have. And the guy has been doing some wonderful things that I don't think you would have the courage or the back, um, backbone to do. Would you give your salary away? Would you, uh, I mean, would you put yourself under all this pressure and attacks every day? What kind of person do you have to be to survive that? probably a guy like Trump. So uh, guys, rethink before you vote. Socialism, none of it's ever worked. Every country has suffered from it. And if you also, I've said in other videos, go back in history, study to, um, 1929 and the depression, and not only what happened to us, but all the countries that were affected by it. And, and look what happened to their... Um, Structure that was actually how Hitler came to power, and some other countries went amok. 
because the people didn't have money. They they wanted freebies. Um, and so they put in people that were evil, just plain old evil. And uh, I can guarantee you, Trump is not evil. He's arrogant and he's probably hard to like and a little too bold for you. But that's exactly the kind of guy we need in there right now. Then give him his for eight years, give him a chance to do his stuff. And then let's all take a deep breath and see, is this the direction we want to go or is the other one? Because I'm telling you, socialism, New Green Deal is not going to be a, it sounds all good, but it's going to affect our pocketbooks and affect our jobs. And I think, and so I beg you, please, um, I, I don't need to be bad mouth. I'm not trying to crit. I understand how people want things free and maybe they want their, their, uh, um, student loans paid off and they want free insurance and stuff, but there's a cost, a big cost to that. And you probably won't like it. I'm pretty sure. After years of research and countless hours of R and D work, teams were assembled, research was presented and the idea was put out to the public. If this could be done, the world would be amazed. Outdoor life would be changed forever. Hiking, vacation, and camping would never be the same. They got the work, they started designing, they made the product, and it's here today just for you. Yes, Ranger Rob poopy bags are finally here. They're bigger, deeper, smell like lemon, and strong. Available at Amazon at low cost and free shipping. All right, guys, we are back. And I want to remind you, if you're an arson B on Easy Street, one is it's only a half hour show. Two, we love to interview folks. And you may be surprised what we'd be interested in talking to you about. So you, if you're not like some famous person, well, that's okay. If you've got some skill or some kind of lifestyle you're doing that is, sounds interesting, you'd like to share with others, uh, we'd love to talk to you. Maybe we'll get you on the show. We'd really love it. Um, need to remind you once again, you can find Easy Street on several platforms, uh, but Spreaker is the best. Go down to our description below and I will tell you where you can find us. Um, and you can, and like I said, we're on Good Talk Radio also. And uh, yeah, we just uh, have fun here. We don't have to stay on one particular subject. Um, like I said, we just jumped into politics. We're jumping right out of that. So one of the things I do want to remind you, we talked about coins a little bit and prepping. But uh, I really, from the news I'm hearing, whether no matter what elections turn out to be, it'll be interesting to hear this video after elections and see what I sound like. Huh. But I got a feeling we all need to be aware of that because of this COVID things, we're having shortages, productions are down, distribution is down. We're having shortages in food, aluminum, lumber, all kinds of things. And so uh, we might get hit pretty hard we're going into the winter where a lot of uh, produce isn't being made here in the United States. It's coming from uh, other countries and they're hurting too as far as their uh, weather and stuff. And and by the way, I, I am going to make a comment about um, the global heating stuff. And uh, if you go back in history, first of all, like when it comes to hurricanes, we've had this many hurricanes before. We've had droughts before. I think the earth is actually going through its normal cycles. The impact of uh, uh, carbon emissions and stuff like that are not as great as they're saying. Uh, I think the earth is just doing its normal kind of cycles. And uh, uh, what might seem odd right now could uh, be back to normal again later. Maybe it'll start being too cold. Um, but uh, I, I think a lot of politicians are using the he, uh, global crisis as far as uh, weather as a, a political ploy to uh, get more control. And uh, I really think if you did some homework and stuff here and go back in history and find out, has this happened before? And the answer is uh, yes, it has. It's happened several times, uh, not only within our century, but several centuries before. Um, We've had funny weather patterns before. Um, and if you really, really go back, you'll see that like you can go up to Alaska and find out that they it was one time that they had tropical forests. Uh, I would say that was a little bit of a climate change, wouldn't you say? 
So nothing new is actually going on. It's, it's the earth doing what she wants to do, whether we're on it or not. And I don't think there's really a thing we can do about it. Yes, we should keep our waters clean. Yes, we got to keep our pollution down. Yes, we got to take care of our land. Uh, less chemicals, things like that. That's common sense just for our own human health. But as far as the weather climate, uh, I think we need to rethink that. I think you need to do some homework. Go back in history. Everything I've talked about in this show today, go back in history. And you'll find it's replaying itself. Our politics, our people, our climate, our finances, all of it's replaying itself. And uh, if you want to know the answers to what's going on today, look at history. It's right there. So guys, I want to thank you very much for listening to uh, Easy Street. Uh, please take the time to like and subscribe to our uh, either video or to our audio. Uh, we really do appreciate it. And if you're interested in being on the show, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we urge everybody to be safe. We uh, urge everybody to be understanding. If you have a little bit of faith in there, suck in that Holy Spirit and get some love in you. And you'll find you'll be a very happy person. Faith, love, love. And just being a good person, you'll be surprised just how much better your life will be. So once again, thank you for listening and watching to Easy Street. Until next time, bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.